Good afternoon, guys. It's me, Alex, and happy Monday. How is trucking going? I guess it's 2 p.m. I was done with dispatching my trucks. I did finish answering some emails, and I decided to talk about why is dispatcher always at fault? If you have been dispatching, or if you just started, you know that sometimes that stress and that pressure and all the blame that we take is not fair. Well, I'll be back in a second and we're going to talk about this. Our safety class coming up just in few And let's start from the first blame. My dispatcher does not take care of me. I am sitting without load. That means that he or she is not doing their job. I don't have reload. I've been sitting for a day or two. Or maybe I got unloaded at 6 a.m. And now it's 2 p.m. And I still do not have a load. Well, who is at fault here? In this case, and you guys know I am direct, right? Well, in this case, that means the dispatcher really does not do his job. But sometimes it's impossible to please owner operator as a dispatcher. So if you're on the same page with me and you trust in me and I am doing my job as a dispatcher and you are doing your job as a driver. So let's talk about it. So as a driver, you pick up on time, you maintain your equipment, you are on the same team with me, you accept track and you send me paperwork right away so I can get that revised rate confirmation with the lumber charges. You give me updates. That's what I mean. We are on the same page. Me as a dispatcher, I know all the preferences, right? I know where you live. I know how often you would like to be home. I know your equipment to smallest details, right? I know what you have in your truck, trailer. I know your empty scale ticket. I even know where you would like to go or not to go. So it's not about I'm not going to be forcing you to go to the island or maybe East Coast when you're not comfortable with this. I know your preferences because you are the boss. I am here just to give a service for you the best I can to make sure I can add loads from A to B. But then we have drivers who make it so hard for us with unrealistic expectations. So I'm not going to take heavy loads. I'm not going to do multi-pick, multi-drop, and it's nonsense anyway. So yeah, I agree with that. One-on-one -on -one is the best load. I don't do that. I don't care even driver going to say, oh, I don't mind it. Sometimes... Yesterday, we actually booked in a class to drop just because it was really easy. And I know that it's not going to hurt my transit next day. But then the driver says, I'm not going to go here. I want to come back on this time at home. Make sure that it's a first come, first serve. If it's a reefer, I don't want an appointment early in the morning. I don't want to have minus 10 degrees. I'm not going to tarp. I'm not going to deadhead. Well, find me a magic load in the low market, right? Well, this is something which is not going to happen. So then the same driver posting on all the Facebook. So he is calling his buddies and he's saying, well, my dispatcher simply sucks. I'm sitting here. She cannot find me the load. And believe me, guys, I went through this for so many years. Many of you know that I'm Ukrainian, Eastern European. So my, when I opened the company, most of the drivers were, of course, Eastern Europeans. And believe me, I love my people, but I hate their attitude because it was so high expectations and all of these things they're not going to do, but they want you to book magical uh, load. So when the market is paying $2, they want to drive $4 per mile. If the market is paying $2.40 like right now, they want to still be at $3.50 per mile. If the market was paying 
still three fifty four dollars, and they're way we're making twelve fifteen thousand a week gross was still not enough, never enough. So that's why whose fault is this? Dispatcher or a uh, driver? Well, I can tell you this. If you know that your driver is delivering, let's say today, how many of you had a drivers which were delivering today because they were driving over weekend or maybe they were empty already today? So did you do your job as a pro dispatcher? Market is tough now. Market is low now. Did you pre-book? Did you look for your Monday loads on Friday? Did you log into the apps on Saturday, Sunday? Because that's what we did in our class, in front of the class, right? We knew that our the driver is delivering in North Carolina. We were trying to post. We were trying to see what's going on. And then we spotted GB Hunt load right there. We did play the little casino, right? And we did want the bid. I guess what? That load was perfect for us today. Driver got unloaded early, early six o'clock. By eight, he was already loaded and he's on the way. On Friday, I couldn't find anything which would make sense to me. But on Sunday, I did book the load. So if your drivers are sitting without loads for half day, two days, three days, then let's be realistic. Yes, dear dispatcher, you are at fault. Maybe you are lacking the knowledge. Maybe you are not building a relationship. Maybe you are not using your logic and you're not utilizing all the skills. That means that truck stop, all the load boards, right? And you have to be realistic. If you know you are delivering, for example, in North Carolina, and you post the truck and it shows that on that certain day, it's going to be only 20 loads close by, what do you need to do? You need to pre-book. You need to keep looking. When you go into the area, which is easier to cover, you can wait till today, tomorrow morning, today, today, Monday morning, but you'd better wake up early. You'd better have that cup of coffee probably at 6.37 and start calling. This would be your priority, that truck on Monday. So fault of the dispatcher, if the trucks are not uh, loaded by 2 p.m. on Monday, yes, it is, because you can pre-book. This is your responsibility to pre-book. Is this your fault that your driver is picky and you want to book one load, second load, third load, and he's going to tell you, no, not good enough. Ask for more money. I'm not going to do it. If he's still sitting there at two, three o'clock, now it's at his fault. He is at fault if he doesn't realize that by just sitting there, waiting for the miracle load, he's hurting himself. Well, it's at him. Okay. Another thing. Dispatchers get blame for shippers and receivers. When we call, when we book online, when we discuss all the details, most of us, we ask the same questions over and over and over calling about the load from Newark, New Jersey to Aurora, Illinois. Is it still available for drive and for today, for tomorrow, for Friday? Can I have a details? What time is it picking up? What time is it delivering? And hopefully you guys do this, right? You look at the map, you calculate the transit. When the transit makes sense, you're gonna move on. How heavy is the load? Is it palletized? Is it floor loaded? Is it bulk? Well, hopefully, it is palletized. You want to take palletized loads because easy unload, easy load. Okay? Got that right. What is the weight? Does that include pallets, right? Do you know your empty scale ticket? You should know, right? This is one of the homeworks my class is going to be doing this week. They will need to make sure they know the empty scale ticket for every combination, for every truck, trailer, and driver. It's going to be different. You got it right. That's, you can fit it on your truck. You can manage this. Okay, now what is a commodity? The commodity makes sense. Is it excluded on your policy? It's not excluded. Well, good to go. 
Now you talk about the money. You did your little steps. Quick rate search. You know, previous two, three loads. You put it on the map. You put it on a map and you know till Monday, let's say from last Monday till Monday, what was your gross? What was the rate per mile? For newbies, rate per mile is calculated by taking the rate which was offered for the load and divided by total miles. Total miles are deadhead miles, empty miles, the one we drive from previous delivery to next pickup, and our loaded miles. What is your RPM as of today? So you need to have two windows, one with all previous loads at least for seven days. And then when you add in the one, this load, you can see, is this load is gonna kill your previous rate per mile? Yes or no? So if it's drowning down, then don't take this load. Find a different solution. So you got all this, uh, make it happen. You email it to the driver. You dispatch him. The driver is giving you a hard time. Well, driver's telling you, Alex, I am not going to be accepting a tracking. I don't want them to track my phone. This is your fault. Tell them it is my privacy. You are dispatcher. Go ahead and tell TQL, GB Han, whoever we were uh, working with today, whatever brokers, uh, pure management, tell them I will not be tracking because I live in America. This is a country of freedom, blah, blah, blah. I am not going to be doing this. Okay. Driver start driving. He comes there and the load is canceled. Well, what's happening? Now this is a dispatcher fault because I guess what? Because nowadays with a low market, the broker will cancel the load without even informing you most of the time. Why? Because your driver did not want to be on the same page. Whose fault is this now? Me as a dispatcher who wasted my time, booked the load, negotiated, made sure telling you to accept MicroPoint, or you as a driver who did not want to be a part of the team. So now it's one, one and one, right? First one, truck sitting without load till 2 p.m. on Monday, Dispatcher's fault, 100%, if driver is not a picky one. Here, whose fault is this? Driver's fault, because dispatcher did the job, but driver did not want to play on the same side. So I will be right back. So one, one to one, and I'll see you in 30 seconds. And we are back. So now what's happening? Driver is pissed. You need to look for a load. Do you really think it's so easy to find a load at 2 p.m., especially if you're on the East Coast? Well, not easy. You have to get really lucky. Even if you jump on all those, on all those load boards, most of the loads are covered in the morning. So now driver is upset. My dispatcher did not do a good job. Let's say driver did accept micro tracking, but just for a little bit. The broker emailing you, he's calling driver, please do not stop micro tracking. But he's like, okay, I'm loaded. I don't care anymore. I have the load. Okay. He delivers the load. If you have factoring, factoring pays you right away. 30 days later, 45 days later, you get in a short pay and they deduct $50, $150, sometimes even $200, $250 for what? For not tracking the full trip. Now again, whose fault is this? This is dispatcher's fault because you book this load. Make sure they pay me. They have no rights to take this money. Really, honey? Wow, I did my job. 
I told you, you have to track. I told you that they will deduct the money. So if you are not on the same page and you're not following the rules, nothing I can do. Doesn't matter how good dispatcher I am because now you breaking the rules of the agreement, right? And if they were reaching out to you, and if I was reaching out to you and you still wanted to play a big shot, unfortunately, my dear driver, now it's your fault. So what do we have there? Who is counting? One, two, two. Let's say dispatcher never told, never read all those notes in the rate confirmation where it says, well, if the driver is not going to stop tracking, he's going to have fine. If the driver is not going to accept, he's going to get fine. Oh, load going to get canceled. If you're working as a company dispatcher, and a lot of times you are not sending the full rate confirmation, and it's not an owner operator, and you fail to give this information to your driver because you just gave him pickup, delivery, you only gave him maybe temperature, and maybe you said that it has to be three load locks. If you fail, to give him important information from the rate confirmation, then I guess what, dear dispatcher, it is your fault now for that short pay, for cancel load, for everything else. So see, it can work both ways. That's why reading rate confirmation, understanding what's going to happen if you do not follow instructions. Because what is a rate confirmation? Well, rate confirmation is a legal agreement, right? It's a contract between broker and a carrier to move the freight from A to B under certain agreements. First, it's going to be the rate, let's say $2,000. Secondary, the times have to match. You have to pick up at 2 p.m. You have to deliver two days later at 8 a.m. Your driver has to put, for example, temperature 34 degrees, pre-cool, has to send BOL within 24 hours, PODs, right? You need to submit the proof of any receipts within 48 hours, and driver has to track. Those are all the stipulations in a contract. So you, as a dispatcher, if you work in with a company drivers, and you're not really using TMS where you can copy paste from the rate confirmation and send it directly to the driver. If you're just giving them pick up and delivery, then make sure, make sure you read it and tell him what has to be done. So in this case, if the driver was never notified what he has to do, well, this is dispatcher fault. Okay. Going to the transit. Most of the dispatchers, and I can tell you this, most of you are at fault because let's be honest, if you're really honest, new people who started or people who never have been trained, most of you guys don't pay attention to hours of service. You don't know how logbook works. You don't know the rules and you still click Amazon or you still book the load and you don't have a clue how the driver is going to make this transit. That's why we have drivers who are pissed and they get mad at you and they're going to say, Alex, are you kidding me? You booked a load for me with delivery tomorrow at 6 a.m. And this is 700 miles when I am delivering today at 1 p.m. Right? Well, I personally don't do that because I know how to calculate transit and I do have uh, all my logins to every carrier, to every ELD out there. If I am dispatching them, I have to have login because I need to see how many hours left on cycle, how many hours on shift, how many hours driving, what's going on. If you guys don't have access, if your driver does not give you access, then you know what? That's kind of his fault. Because without access to ELD, without knowing what's going on, it's almost impossible to book the load unless you're going to be booking load which have wrong transit. In this case, you lo you're losing money, right? 
or you always gonna be booking the loads when you will be all late for delivery all late for pickup who is calling us come on we're doing live don't disturb us dispatch dispatch Yes, I can hear you. How can I help? Uh, hey, so I see you have a truck person in Fort Wayne, Indiana for tomorrow. I was wondering what time that would be available. I have two trucks tomorrow in Fort Wayne, Indiana. One is going to be empty at 10. One is going to be empty at 2 p.m. What do you have? What is your uh, MC, uh, by the way, before we start? Uh, yeah, no, I, I mean, my MC is 3 5 one 2 This is going to be an early pickup. I can't hit 10 o'clock too late. Yeah, so right. you, yeah, so you need an early uh, uh, empty truck. Tonight, all oh, early, yeah, early. I need a truck. I need, well, I need a truck to pick up at 7 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, okay. Yeah, unfortunately, we cannot help you. But if you have something else, call me back. Right. Yes, ma'am. Well, mm -hmm. Bye-bye. So, knowing knowing what's going on with your trucks. I have two trucks, actually, tomorrow in Fort Wayne, Indiana. One is delivering at 7. I'm giving him two hours. He's going to be empty by 9. Can I pick up this load at 7 o'clock? No. Second is delivering at 2 p.m. He was coming from North Carolina. He did have those two drops. So he will be empty by 2 p.m. tomorrow, both in Fort Indiana. Did I waste his time talking about details, talking about commodities? Did I talk about anything else? No. I know that it's impossible for me to pick up at 7 a.m., right? So you always have to remember where your trucks are. So let's go back. Let's go back to hours of service. So you booked the load, driver accepted, never told you if he has enough hours because you don't have access to his ELD. Then he cannot make the transit. And now it's your fault. You as a dispatcher, you booked the load, which was impossible to deliver. Wow. Wow. If you guys have access to EOD and you know the rules and you book nonsense, well, this is dispatcher fault. But if your driver does never let you ever have access to EOD or you work for the company who still doesn't give you access, well, it's kind of, how can I do my job? Well, I am a magician here, but I don't have any tools to do magic tricks, right? Well, you have to be a really great magician, you know, come up with something <laughs> out of air, but it's impossible. Even magicians, they have their tools, they have their special little tricks to make magic happen. So now your driver has expectations, which is not realistic. No one, even me, I cannot book a load unless it's a longer distance. So you're still going to make it right without knowing hours of service. So who is at fault? If you have access to EOD and you book nonsense load, dispatcher is at fault. If you are a driver who does not give access or company who does not have access to EOD, this is, guys, your fault, right? Next one. We have drivers who will still give you access. You look at the hours. You approximately know how long it's going to take, where he's going to go. But then next day, he's still not delivering. What is the problem here? Tell me, dear drivers, how many of you, especially the newer drivers who came to work right now and you still don't understand how to use the ELD rules and you don't even know how to use, for example, sleeping birth provision, eight and two, seven and three, what is the adver adverse driving? What is a sleeper, right? How many of you just driving until you see that red line? Oh my God, I have violation. You have to sleep, let's say, for 10 hours and you slept for nine hours, 59 minutes. You turn on logbook and oh my God, now you're in violations for what? For the next eight days. You look and you know that it's no truck stop close by and you drive until you have Two minutes left on logbook, but closest truck stop, uh, 60 miles, 50 miles. You call dispatcher and you start screaming, well, I am violating my logbook because I cannot make it. Okay, whose job is this to plan your trips? Dispatchers or yours? So in this case, if you have driver like that, 
who doesn't know how to plan, who simply <laughs> drives with the flow, you will never succeed. Both of you are going to feel miserable, right? In that case, it is driver fault. Learn how to plan. Make sure you calculate. And sometimes you have to tell the drive, uh, to dispatcher, you know what? I don't drive that much. I need to take the break. I need to do this because all drivers, same as the dispatchers, we are all different. Drivers have different habits. I remember, oh my God, <laughs> I hired a long time ago the driver with uh, 10 years of experience. And we have reefer companies. So lot, most of our loads, it's a reefer going West Coast, right? Go to Washington, go to uh, East Coast, come back to Chicago, go back to Washington. That's what we've been doing for a long, long time. So when I was hiring this driver, he's like, I am such a strong driver. I want to make money. I want to go to West Coast. I like, okay, 10 years of experience, you know? Guy seems like he knows, came, I hired him, all the paperwork was done, drug test, whatever, all the things you have to do as an owner of the company. Take him the first load. Uh, Chicago to Grand U Washington. Actually, even with extra day in transit, because I never give really strong load, like when you really have to be on schedule for every day, first time. Well, what do you think? That was a Walmart. And I had to reschedule for two days later. I guess what? The driver thought that driving 400 miles going to West Coast, it's already a great job. He was stopping by. And in his logbook, I would say, oh, need to take a nap. Stop to drink Coca-Cola. Had to, had to play music. He was even making those comments in logbook. When I saw that, I was like, are you kidding me? You telling me you can drive that 600 miles for sure every day. You telling me you've been driving for 10 years. And yes, he was driving for 10 years. But do you see? In his mind, driving 400 miles, that was already a lot of miles to drive a day. If I knew that, if he would honest with me, would I ever take load for him, go to West Coast? No. I would keep him on Midwest with a shorter loads, regional loads, right? And that's what we did. Actually, we changed the plan. Finally, took him a while to come back, right? Because he spread out so much that he had to do restart in Washington, came back, and we were trying to work together on Midwest. But after a while, the guy was irresponsible. He would not call for dispatch. He would not turn on, turn on the paperwork on time. So we had to say our goodbyes. The point of this story is that every driver has a different habit. Every driver has a different schedule. But every driver's responsibility is to do what? To plan their trip so they can make this transit. If this transit was booked correctly. So for all dispatchers who try to dispatch and you still confuse on hours of service, after today, please. Do yourself a favor. Go to FMCSA. Find all the rules. Look at the samples of logbooks. Practice your logic. If I pick up today and I deliver this time and I have so much deadhead, when can I be there tomorrow? Otherwise, guys, you're not doing this job. You simply trying to do this job. And some of you get lucky because if you have a driver who kind of fixes you a mistake, and he may be quieter one, so he's not going to complain uh, that much. But a lot of times, they will scream at you. They will start looking for the different dispatcher. They will complain to you, to their owners of the company, simply because you don't understand hours of service. So spare some time today, tomorrow, week, two. Start putting it together. Hours of service, transit and your driver habits. Everybody's different. So this is kind of homework for you. Okay. Now, transit is possible. Transit is not possible. Well, number, whatever it is, biggest issue. I don't know. We already had one, two, three, four, let's say five. Dispatcher lied to me about how heavy load is. Alex, you told me it's going to be 32,000. I came to shipper uh, 
and they are loading me and the total weight is 42 and a half. Why did you lie to me? I told you not to book heavy loads. And let's be realistic. Reality of this is that 92% of the time, brokers do not really know exact weight. And you know how they cover that? They cover that that every rate confirmation is stating we have all rights to load this truck to legal limits. And what is your le- legal limits? Well, your empty scale ticket. If you can go to 45 and a half, and if they're going to push 45 and a half on your truck, although original rate said that it's going to be 32, they can do that because that's what they have in the rate confirmations. And here's starting the real war. Alex, call them. I am not going to get loaded. I'm not going to deliver until they pay me for that extra weight, $10,000. Because again, I understand the driver. He's wasting more fuel because he's heavier. His uh, depreciation of his equipment also goes up because again of the weight, you know, the wear of the tires, of the brakes, of everything, right? But again, do not kill the messenger. We do our best. And even in a class, we don't just ask how heavy it is. We ask if it's included, uh, including the pallets. A lot of rate confirmation would give you up to 45,000, up to 44,000. I just booked the load, which was supposed to be, guys, 26,000. I guess what? They put 36,000 on this truck with the pallets, with a total weight. And do you think that the broker is going to give me any money? I wish. I wish it would be. And it would be honest. But trucking is not honest business. Everybody's trying to scam, right? And that's, I do believe, it's actually in brokers because the weight has to be correct. But now let's think about this. Market is down. Shippers, receivers, buyers, they're trying to save the money on the cost of the shipment. That's why they're pushing so much product on those trucks until it's like, <laughs> you know, it's over, over overweight most of the time. And you need to make sure that you don't go overweight. So as a dispatcher, we do try to find you light load, especially in the summer. In the winter, we have to pay attention. It depends where we're going through. If we're going to go through uh, Colorado, if we're going to go through Wyoming, if we're going to go through, if we're going to go through winter stay like Montana, uh, South Dakota, no, we don't want to be light in the winter, right? And as a dispatcher, you should know that. But in the summer, of course, everybody wants to be lighter, right? Because you want to save money on the fuel. But let's ask, is it dispatcher fault that most of the time brokers and shippers, receivers do not give correct weight? Well, kind of not. We do our best. So dear drivers, stop, stop screaming. Start throwing the little tantrums. We're not in kindergarten. You got to load inside. I guess what? I guess that's what happens. We're going to try to get compensated. And sometimes, you know what? Because I work with the reefers, I had happened a few times. They told me that it's going to be chilled at 32 or 34 degrees, actually, dairy product. My driver got there and it's actually minus 10 degrees. Thanks God it was in the winter. So I didn't really mind minus 10 degrees. But I did ask. It was England Logistics. I said, Kathleen, you know what? You told me 34. It's minus 10. Actually, in winter, it didn't really matter. But she did pay me extra because her rate confirmation, her personally told me, she told me the wrong temperature. So she gave me extra 150 bucks for what? For fuel. Actually, in winter, it was okay. But in summer, it would be crucial. So here you go. We have problem with what? Paperwork, 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 paperwork. Wow. And here we starting. First, we're going to start invoicing. Your driver 
if you dispatching him and he's like, well, Alex, where is my money? I was checking RTS. You did not submit it. And you know what? Let's say today is Monday, right? To get the money from RTS, you need to submit everything by 11 o'clock. Well, it's Monday. I have to cover my trucks. Sorry. And you're this, you're actually drivers because he has few drivers. Two of them did not send PODs. What do you want me to do? I asked them once. I asked them twice. They are busy because they are loading. So the PODs got to me later, around one o'clock. All right. Today is Monday. He needs money, right? Weekends was, uh, you know, weekends expensive in Chicago. You go do all the things, right? He needs money today. What can I do? Honey, two of your trucks did not provide for me PODs. I submitted at 1 p.m. He's not going to receive money tomorrow. He's going to receive them on Wednesday morning. Whose fault is this? Me as a dispatcher or his drivers did not send me PODs right away. And here's the difference. Because, guys, I do manage my own company and I do manage some other company, lots of carriers. And we look at business differently. I never have problems with my own drivers. My drivers are trained. They know what it takes to get paid on time. They know how to make money with Alex. So I don't even have to ask. I receive PODs right away. If there was any lumper, they're going to tell me right away, right there. They're not calling me. They're not bugging me. They know what they do unless it's an emergency. That's why we can succeed so much. Then I have some carriers who have two, three trucks, and we still dispatch them. And the owner of the company, he wants to be a big shot every day. And he calls million times, million times, million times to that point where I sometimes I say, you know what? I think we're going to be done dispatching you because we do our job. Everything is under control. Just because you want to put your five cents into this process, I mean, it doesn't work like this with professional dispatch service. If you have something to tell me, tell me maybe in the end of the day. We can talk to you once a week. But if you want me to dispatch your trucks and do a good job, I cannot answer your phone 20 times in a row. I have other carriers I have taken care of. I have to make sure my team does a good job. I need to make sure everybody's loading, unloading. And sometimes those people get upset. Oh, Alex, you know, in the beginning you were so friendly. Well, in the beginning I had to know you. The moment I know your drivers, the moment I know what we're doing, the moment I know that we are making money, let me do my job. So this is another problem between dispatchers and drivers. They want to feel special. And I get it. You guys special. Each of you special to me. But as a human, I cannot answer everybody, every text message, every joke you got. I appreciate you try to be funny and it's good. When I have time, I respond. But a lot of times drivers take it personal. Now picture, you are a dispatcher, company dispatcher who works in the office. You dispatch seven trucks and you have seven guys who want to blah, blah, blah with you 10 times a day. Are you going to be able to do your job? And then when you start telling, I'm sorry, I have to book load for the other driver. This driver is getting pissed. Oh, what do you mean? I am not, I don't mean nothing to you. Oh, so I am not. And it's, it's like, no, you mean a lot to me. I do my job, but can I do my job? And it gets to the point, especially when we as women are dispatcher, because guys, they drive, they're bored. And if they show you sometimes, right, they're like, oh, my God, she's talkative, she's blonde. Oh, my God, let me flirt with her. Let me tell all those jokes. Guys, I understand this, but let us do our job. When we have a minute, we can call you and talk to you. But again, this is not about, uh, it's not uh, my responsibility to entertain you. My responsibility is ma make sure we respect each other. We do our job and you and me making money. So this is another problem. So whose fault is a dispatcher who is ignoring phone calls? Or this is a driver who sometimes cannot find those boundaries, personal boundaries, right? Let's talk about this.
let's say something happened. You work for the smaller guys who owner uh, tells, oh, you're going to dispatch three, four, five trucks. You start at seven, you work till five, six. And then owner says, oh, you're going to be in charge of answering all the phone calls after hours, Saturday, Sunday. Well, guys, if they really pay in your golden salary, maybe you can commit to this. But again, if you are a dispatcher, even if it's a company dispatcher, if you work for the carrier, unfortunately, guys, you will need to step in. I am not 24-7 service. I am not pre-recorded machine. And yes, sometimes I will take care of it. And I usually do. But if it's your drugs and you have problems, dispatcher's job is not taking care of breakdowns on the road after hours on Saturday, Sunday. Because most of the carriers, when they give you an opportunity, to be their dispatcher, they think that you work for them 24-7. No, we're not 24-7 service. Because if I would be 24-7 service, I don't think any of you can afford our service, right? Because we value our time and we know what we're doing. So that's why when some companies are looking to have backup or maybe second shift or step in as an owner, that's what's happening. Because everybody start what? blaming dispatcher you did not pick up the phone at 3 a.m i needed the lumper because of you i was sitting there for three hours well did you call the owner of the company oh maybe you are the owner operator and you just simply don't know how to do what log into your fuel card get yourself money code or call the broker and get the lumper fee don't blame me at 3 a.m. Don't blame me at midnight. Don't blame me because you did not check on the paperwork, right? The biggest problem was the paperwork. PODs, proof of delivery, BOLs. You as a driver, you go there and they give you five pages. You go check in, you give them five pages. You getting out, well, you took two pages and you simply didn't care, right? Well, now we have problem with invoicing. I cannot submit your load because we are missing three pages. And you know what I got to respond? I do have one Eastern European carrier right now. In the beginning, it was so tough. It took me six months to finally say, you know what? Honey, this is your company now. So please, will you change attitude or we're going to be done with this relationship? Oh, I don't care. That's what they gave me. I am not going to call. I said, well, but who is a driver? You as a driver. He used to work as a company driver before, but now this is your company. Now this is your short pay. Now this is your invoicing. So don't sit there and pretend that you're a big boss. You know it all, right? So it took me six months to break that habit. And even sometimes it's like, don't you see that it's missing one page? Where is extra page? Can you not get out from that? receiver or shipper if you do not have full set of BOLs or PODs. Can you please do that? If we start in detention, can you put in and out time without me asking you 10 times? Because that's what it takes for me to get the detention. Can you please click and start detention on your app? Because most of you are tracking right now because dispatcher or broker does not want to accept from me as a dispatcher. Can you do that? So please stop blaming me, me, and me, right? Another thing, scans. I try my best. I am taking a scan of BOL. And there you see slipper, shoes, chips, whatever else. Believe me, I've seen so many things <laughs> in front of the small image of the scan over the years that I could actually make probably so many funny videos. guys. I don't need to see what you have in the truck. I want a nice scan, quality scan. Nowadays, we have so many apps, right? That it's so simple. It's even going to straighten for you. It's even going to cut for you. So please, just try your best. Why? Because you think that I am the one who needs those scans. You are the one who needs those scans to be a good quality so you can get paid with no problems. You're the one who needs to submit those PODs within 48 hours, not me as a dispatcher. I did what I had to do, and I'm still helping you to get paid, 
to do your invoicing. But for that, I need you to be a part of this. So whose fault is this? For bad scans, for missing pages, for for uh, damages because you did not put two load, load logs, because you did not even pay attention that you have a gap between pallets and you did not ask for airbags. Whose fault is this? Is this always dispatcher, dispatcher, dispatcher? Sometimes, guys, I wish I could be everywhere. You know what? If people ask me, Alex, what is your dream? You know, some people dream about something. I dream about that I could be a shipper, receiver, driver, dispatcher, factoring, insurance agent, all together by myself, then it would be perfect because I can negotiate, I can do the transit, I can do paperwork on time, and it would be a perfect, perfect trucking. But is my dream going to come true? No, because as a dispatcher, as the owner of the company, I can do so much and it takes other people to do the part of their job so we can succeed. Well, I'm going to be right back and we're going to continue a little bit longer for other blames we get as a dispatch. Yes, we're changing the world. So, guys, remember to do what? Guys, we go extra mile, right? Personal me, I go out here and I share all the knowledge. Some of you like it, some of you not. Some people were pissed at me about the videos from the scammers. So, we do our best. we all different. And we just need to make sure that we stay on the same page. So, paperwork. So, paperwork, invoicing issues, short pace are created by whom? By dispatcher probably not providing uh, PODs on time to the brokers, making invoicing, but also for this uh, for the drivers not giving you a good scans, not giving you all the pages, not uh, telling you that he paid the lumper from his own money, losing that receipt, and then screaming at you why they did not pay me four hundred dollars, or maybe broker did pay. And now they don't reimburse you, right? So whose fault it is? Both dispatchers and drivers. If both of you fail to do your duties, it is your fault. It's nobody's fault. It's not broker's fault because you have to make sure you fulfill the contract, right? So paperwork. So, so far we had what? Dispatchers not pre-planning, dispatchers not prioritizing, drivers not giving them access to EOD, dispatchers not knowing hours of service, drivers not planning their trips correctly, missing paperwork on both sides. And what else? What else do you think is out there that dispatchers get blamed for? Let me ask you this. You booked the load and the broker did not pay due to bad credit. Whose fault is this? Whose fault is this? Well, if I am working in a company, they should give me no buy list and access to their factory if they use, or they have to give me the list of the brokers they don't work with. But if you as a dispatcher had access to lofts, let me show, for example, um, right here, I'm going to share right now, right? Share the screen. 
Uh, you have loves. I always have it on my screen. I have RTS, so I can check the credit. I can search. Here you go. Mola Solutions. Its rating is B. So if I do have access and I still book the load, which was not approved by the factoring, yes, my dear dispatchers, it's our fault. Yours, mine, if we did not do this. If driver never give you access and you only go from rating on that, well, you'd better make sure, you'd better make sure, let's see. Let me show again what we have here for tomorrow. Okay, let's see. At least, at least pay attention to the rating on that on truck stop, organized by the credit score of the brokers, right? And you can see that rating starts from 100 till whatever zero. I advise you never, never book the load from broker, which is less than 90. But here's the thing. Look at this. This guy's a uh, 100%. If you do have factoring, just look in here, is not gonna, uh, is not going to do what? Do the justice. So if I go back to RTS, if I go back to RTS, and now I'm going to put one of these guys, let's say double A logistics, their MC is 105. One war, whatever, one, four, three, four, one, zero, five. Okay, let's see that them. See, so on RTS, their rating is actually B. On that, their rating is A. Do you see already disconnect there? But a lot of times you're going to see the rating. And I usually give example, let me find... I, I know that I work with this company. This is a good company. I work with my other factoring, uh, Red, Redwood, um, Redwood Transportation. So let's see if they have any, if they have any loads for tomorrow. Because okay, oh, here, Redwood Multimodal, right? So four one two five three three. So their rating on a debt is ninety seven. If I put them. If I put them in, oh my God, I have too many screens. If I put them right here in the, in the, in RTS, red wood, red wood, and I'm going to look for it, right? Look at this. They are at D. So if I would only look at power dead, 97 sounds good. You book the load. And then your dispatcher, your owner says, Alex, this load is not getting paid. This is your fault. And in this case, yes, it is my fault because I only was looking on what? I only was looking at that. If I go to Loves, for example, right? And if I'm going to put the name, same name, look at this. Redwood, let's search. Redwood multimodal right here. Look at this. They have their rating at C. So if I would be working with a carrier who has loves, I would still be okay. But if I working with a carrier who has RTS, well, it would not be approved. So do I prove you my point that actually this is your fault? If you book the load from broker who is not paying and you had an access to factoring, if you had an access to all the information, unfortunately, this is your fault. Well, another thing. So booking the load from the bad broker. What about making up stories all the time, all the time, all the time? You book the load, then you find something better, you cancel in the load, and you're not really paying attention that after a while, they're going to be putting this carrier kind of on a blacklist. Whose fault is this? Guys, a lot of times we are going to make what? We're going to make those stories. Why? 
Because sometimes we do find a better load, right? Like the brokers, when they find a cheaper care, they just go ahead and they just book and make up stories. We do the same. I'm not going to sit here and sweet talk that I did not do it. I did it a lot of times when I knew or the broker kind of was not giving me the full information or actually I did find out something better. But do I do this every day? Is it the habit? No, it's not a habit. But if I find something better, yeah, I will cancel. Did I t- do I tell you to cancel? Just make sure when you do this, it's not going to hurt your career. You have to be kind of really good in storytelling and you need to have a proof, right? The biggest problem here is a disconnect between dispatcher and driver. So let's say I can tell you the actually example. I booked the load for my driver. He needs to do restart. He told me, well, I don't care where I'm going to do restart. So I booked the load for him, picking up on Friday, going to Kentucky on Monday. Shorter load, right? $1,500 right now in this market. All right now in this market, it's a good price. So he would fit restart. He said, I don't want to go home. Well, I booked the load. It was early pickup, eight o'clock. At night, he changed his mind. He's like, you know what? No, I don't want to do this. I'm going to do restart at home. And I'm like, we cannot cancel the load. Your pickup is at eight o'clock. And he's like, oh, just make up a lie. Well, I cannot make up the lie really easy. And the only lie I can make up is to tell what? Unfortunately, I am apologizing, but we did not get unloaded. I cannot pick up your load at 8 o'clock because I knew it was strict load. That's why he gave me $400 more. I email broker right away, actually call him personally. Apologize, told him all this. And what's happening? My driver, who is an owner, he accepted the tracking for this load. He got unloaded and he decided to go home and do restart first and then go. Well, I was on a good note right there with a uh, broker who I worked for years. Next day, he calls me and said, Alex, well, I understand everything, right? You were honest with me. You were trying to tell me you did not get unloaded. But, you know, your driver was still tracking. So they were seeing that he got unloaded in Indiana and start driving home. He never canceled the app. And I was embarrassed. I was so embarrassed that I even said, you know what? Sorry, it's not my company. This is the owner who changed his mind. And I really deeply sorry that it happened. I need to save that relationship. And I can tell you this, that next time this owner operator, I am not pre-booking load for him if he cannot make up his mind. So if he doesn't know where he wants to be and do restart, well, he has to make sure he tells me 100%. And I want that in text message. I want that over in email because I'm not wasting my time. I had to waste actually an hour to connect these loads. I even was already pre-booking Kentucky for Monday with the load from the same facility. In the end of the day, who did he punish? What market in Chicago went down, doesn't matter how good I am or not. He went home, he did restart, and he wanted to get out yesterday from Chicago. Did he make $1,500? No. The best load was $1,050. He still had to go to Kentucky. And actually, he was unloading later because I am not a magician. Market on Sunday was that. What do you want me to do? When you are canceling load on me at 10.30 p.m. on Friday, you telling me that you change your mind. So here again, is it me as a dispatcher at fault that I had to make up story and lie to the broker? Or this is a driver who changing his mind and doesn't know what he's doing. So here you go. Another example. I think we had enough today. Whose fault is this? And we can play this game back and forth. But here I'm teaching you this. It's nobody's fault. And it's not a game. We all have responsibilities. We all have different parts in this pro- uh, process, right? And the process is simple. We have to stay loaded, unloaded, and we have to keep going. You as a dispatcher, you need to make sure that circle makes sense. 
Do not start booking here, there, there, somewhere. If it's an octagon, if it's a star, well, you're not a star dispatcher. Usually, you start from same area. Doesn't matter how far you go, you end up in the same area. With what? With profits. As a dispatcher and as a driver, both of you need to know the cost of trucking. How much does it cost you per mile? Both of you need to talk to each other and explain what are your priorities. For example, me as a dispatcher, I don't like to be bothered a million times if it's nonsense, right? Because I am busy. It's not because I'm not friendly. Guys, you can look at me and say, oh my God, sometimes she's rude, she's direct, she's pushy. Guys, I'm very friendly and kind person. I just cannot stand BS and nonsense. I don't have patience for that. You know, I just cannot pretend and sit here and say, oh my God, yes, oh my God, tell me another story about... No, I am here to run the businesses. I'm here to inspire. I am here to teach. So sorry. If stuff which you're trying to tell me is nonsense, I don't have patience for that. And it's not because... I am mean. It's just because I choose to spend my time somewhere else. Okay. So when you dispatcher and driver, you need to help each other when problem come. It's no point in the fingers. You did this. You did that. That's your fault. That's your fault. Blah, blah, blah. Bad words start coming up. Affording, screaming, handing up all this time. No. Mistakes happen learn from them, talk how you're gonna manage them next time, and only with understanding you can improve the flow of your logistics for both of you, for you as a dispatcher, organizing your time, pre-booking, for you as a driver, making sure you go in, you deliver, and you're not stuck somewhere. So this is relationship between both of you. Can we eliminate all the liars from brokerage side? I wish. Can we control shippers and receivers how they load or unload us? I wish. Can we get rid of all the scammers who still killing our market? I wish. We are trying so hard. But the problem is why people start scamming? Because when they don't have knowledge, when they don't want to run on this business, this is the only way for them to make money. And most of you who are watching me, I can tell you this. Dispatching is possible. Pro-dispatching is possible. You're going to have hard days. You're going to have easy days. You're going to have days when you're like, oh, my God, I am done what I am doing here. I want to quit. I don't deserve for drivers to treat me this day. But you need to relax, right? You need to just let it go sometimes. And you need to put the boundaries. So if the relationship between some drivers and dispatchers do not work, maybe it's time to say goodbye. I can tell you this, money is great, but if making money makes you miserable, believe it or not, you're not going to enjoy that money. And sometimes that's what happens when we do not connect dispatcher and the driver, dispatcher and the owner of the company, right? Dispatcher and the accountant. We all have to connect at some point. And sometimes we're not connectable because maybe I'm looking at the life differently and I value my time and I don't have time for sitting here and faking. That's me. And if you're okay with me like that, but I am making profit for you and I respect you and I am loyal to you, then it's going to work. Otherwise, goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. You guys have to let it go. Sometimes toxic relationship, you have to let go toxic relationship at work, toxic relationship between even you and the brokers, right? Because sometimes you're going to stop working with certain brokers because they are not good for you. They try to lie to you. They don't pay the attention. They don't ever give layover. You have to understand that sometimes it's other people you can make business with, right? You can make connection with and how you're going to succeed. Well, I'm going to answer a few questions and we're going to be done for today. Hopefully you learned something new because purpose of this not for me just sitting here and, you know, rolling my eyes, showing you my little cat who sleeps there. He's tired. He works hard, you know. But purpose of this 
to learn, exchange information, change tracking for better, and actually improve your skills. You are not burned with those skills right away. Even after my class, you receiving this much of foundation, it's going to be up to you to use that knowledge, improve your skills, multitasking, negotiation skills, building a relationship, talking to the kids. It's going to take you time. But is dispatching possible? Yes, it's possible. Can anyone be dispatcher? No, no, and no. To be a dispatcher, you have to have certain qualities. You have to multitask. You have to be organized. You have to be a people person. Your communication skills has to be there. And you need to make sure that you know how to handle stress. If you take it personally, if your ego is on the way, if you're going to start crying after each load that got canceled, then dispatching is not for you, right? If after each load, you're going to start hanging up and affording with a broker, dispatching is not for you. If every time driver is going to tell you that, oh, you're not a good dispatcher, you're going to give up, dispatching is not for you. Dispatching is for people who understand that it's a stressful job, that it's a lot of responsibilities. It's a lot of logical thinking, fast thinking, logical thinking, multitasking, making sure that you cut out the BS. That's what takes dispatcher. That's why not everybody can be dispatchers, but a lot of people who have strong foundation, who put their goals, they are becoming dispatchers. I would never think I would be dispatcher. I would never thought I would be do anything with trucking ever in my life. You know what? It's so funny. I am Ukrainian and a long time ago, you know, like in Ukraine, we go and we have like um, women who look for your future and everything else. And it was so funny. I think it was like 2000, 2004. And this woman is like, well, you're going to have another baby boy. And eh, that's what I happened. And she's like, okay, you're going to uh, get divorced. Oh, well, it's happened. But then she's like, and you're going to have a new business with a big, big Cars. I like, what do you mean? What cars? What business? But you know what the funny part is? <laughs> I end up in trucking. And it's uh, like sometimes people ask me what market's going to happen. I wish I would have her crystal ball, right? So I can predict what's going to happen. But that's how I got in trucking. I guess it's a fate. But if I got into this industry, I want to try to be the best. I want to make sure I do the best possible I can do for my carries and that's what makes me different when I teach that class I give myself 100% I give my heart my soul and sometimes uh, students cannot get it because they take it personally but again I am not schooling you I am not pushing you I am showing you that you can do it and sometimes yeah you need a little push you need a little uh, little uh, Alex is like come on you can do it yes you can make that phone call unfortunately this is my teaching style that's why some people love it or hate it it's no in between but I'm here to give you all my knowledge and improve tracking for better let's see really fast because uh, life is already going for over an hour some people complain that our um, videos are too long so let's see um okay thank you so much for this knowledge thank you if the dispatcher did advise can the driver withhold your payment that's probably was talking about what about maybe micro tracking or something so yes if the dispatcher advise a driver and driver did not follow well they will take the money short pay and actually driver cannot complain because he did not follow the rules so i mean it's uh it's his responsibility now right my problem is car uses paper my problem is car uses paper what do you mean by that paper logbook what is he using i know i need i need kind of verification paper paper what so hopefully it's paper logbook. Well, even if he has paper logbook, you need to know when he started. You kind of know because you know when he's delivering. So in the morning then, you need to verify with him. When are you planning to start your shift? 
right? When are you taking your break? How many hours you're going to draw? Even with a paper workbook, I mean, we've been dispatching since paper workbook a long time ago. Still, you have to understand the transit. And how are you going to know this? Well, you know when he's delivering. You know when he did restart. So you just need sometimes to verify because you can be off an hour or maybe two hours, but you can still calculate that transit. Hello. How do I ask driver for ELD access? Simple as that. Do you want me to dispatch you? I need your uh, ELD, right? Because I need to make sure that I see what's going on, right? So you're going to have access to their app. So you can see all of it, right? So you're going to see where they go, what's going on, right? Let me see something. Let me see really fast. So here you go. You have access. You see what's going on, right? That's your access. How are you going to know? You're going to get access for ELD. Okay. Um, <laughs> hi, my love. <laughs> hi, my love. I guess we have a follower who, who loves our channel. Okay. Uh, hello, Alex. I'm new to industry. Saving money to take your classes. Cannot wait. Thank you. We're going to have sale for our August class. It's going to be sale for our Independence Day sale. So make sure do not miss it. It's going to be 48 hour sale and we're going to give $100 off for that. Hello. Hello. Okay. I, Alex, I'm new to your videos. I like it when I can get class with you, Miss Sassy Train. Thank you, Francisca. Yes. What else? <laughs> Okay, mister, I love you. Are you in trucking? If you love me, come on, let's help us change trucking for better. Okay, thank you. Uh, how can we book a load? Well, we're not answering this. We were talking about uh, blames for dispatcher. How can you book the load? You use load boards, so you have personal relationship with brokers. You post your equipment, you call, and you book the load. So you're working for carrier. You're going to have all the information. You are have to be able to know how to do setups, what to negotiate, know the equipment. That's how we book the load. We see a lot of smiley faces from Joy. Um, okay, what is this? Hi, Alex. I just see you six months ago and you're an excellent teacher. I want to know more uh, car trucking industry for now. I just run in Amazon as a driver, but I miss the paperwork and computer. So I guess he wants to become, I guess, dispatcher because he works as a Amazon, as I can understand from this, from this, I miss the paperwork and computer. Yes. Can the driver, let's answer this. Can the driver, instead of driving, become a dispatcher? At some point of your life, you guys going to get tired of being on the road, right? Yes. It's going to be easier for you because at least transit, shippers, receivers, uh, equipment. It's going to be easy for you to understand. Although a lot of drivers who sign up for my classes, they get out from the class with like eyes like this. Oh my God, Alex, I've been driving for 10 years. I've been driving for 15 years and I learned so much. And I'm like, really? How did you drive for 10, 15 years? Because a lot of drivers, they just do drive. And a lot of times they don't get this side of the dispatching or even as a driver, they never got trained. They never got educated. So they do their job. They don't get in accidents. They got from point A to B, but they are missing a lot of things. They don't understand, for example, blind shipments. They don't understand importance of submitting PODs, reimbursements, right? Negotiating, pallet exchange, those airbags. Somebody just asked me, what is the airbag? Well, airbag is given by shipper if you have space between the wall and the pallets, right? How to secure the load, what, how important it is to take picture of that seal, how important it is to take picture of load before you close the door. So a lot of drivers are great, great guys, but they never work for the company who takes their time to improve their knowledge, or maybe they just were not really looking into this. So people who come to me as a drivers, actually they inspire in me because it's like it feels so good that finally they're like oh my god alex now finally i know what i was doing two years ago at this ship or receiver now i know why i was short pay now i know why how important it is to stay on top of everything else right so what else uh yeah right here 
I would take 10 minutes break and meditate and come back. Your mental health is important. Yes, that's why I don't want you to become machines. Dispatchers are not machines, right? Sometimes you sit in front of that computer. You said you need to stretch out. You need to go. You need to get out. So if you work from home, you guys seen my video last week. Uh, I go outside all the time with a coffee, with a um, with some sandwich, and I just sit outside for 10, 15 minutes. If you have a privilege to maybe drive away for 10, 15 minutes, do that or do the yoga or just simply just change your mind on something else. Maybe even check on your friends, on your kids, on your family. You cannot sit in front of your computer and look at it and look at it and look at it. That's why. I had a big problem when I had a lot of dispatcher working in the office for me. I did not feel comfortable for them to work from seven to five because if my dispatcher did her job and mostly I had the girls working for me, right? I didn't want them to sit there till five o'clock just because, oh my God, you work for the company. I No, they were able to go. That's why when I started and I worked for a few months just to learn this business, I hated it because I know how to organize my time. I know how to dispatch. I mean, I learned how to dispatch, but I was fast because that's who I am. I do things fast, right? I multitask. And then, oh, you have to sit here till 5.30. I was done at one o'clock, everything on the phone. I can still answer, why would I sit there till 5.30, get in the traffic, and then it takes me hour and a half to get home because of the traffic. So that's why a lot of companies nowadays with phones with technology stop killing those dispatchers that they have to sit there till 6 p.m till 5 30 come on they will do better job if they can get home and they still can hop in on the computer and finish something believe it or not now with the COVID, actually data proved people working from home work even more productive and actually the bad thing that we work more because we're at home and like oh okay let me work another hour so here this is a self-discipline you need to stop like you know what i work enough done don't be like me i'm workaholic that's a bad habit i have i need to break it and i am trying as much as possible to step away and if i work yesterday i had a class right today i dispatch so right now i should not be working but for me doing life it's not work I enjoy doing it. So for me now, it's kind of like a break. Seeing all of you, inspiring all of you, this is not work for me. So if you love what you do, you don't feel like working. But still, I need to make sure that I spend time for myself, for my family, for my kids, and just take care of other things, okay? Uh, you starting the broker training too. Not at the moment because we have lots and lots of things going on. I was thinking maybe in September, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Uh, who else said the stuff? Hello, Alex. Thanks for sharing. How can I take your dispatch courses? You can go to our website and sign up for the class. So if you go to learndispatchtoday.com, you can see all our classes. You can register. Make sure to pre-register at least two, three weeks because you need to you need to share. Okay. I mean, you need you need to be ready. What else? How do I keep up with the market knowledge? What do you read? Well, first, if you belong to Truck Stop to that, they have a lot of extra reading they have magazines they even have the show that dad has their show freight way uh freight way way worse i believe so you have to watch that then you have to belong to all the logistics magazine you need to make sure what's going on right you need to see what's going on in economy to be able to uh, follow the market so it's a lot of things you have to be involved to be a pro dispatcher it's not about just posting the truck and calling about the load if you really want to know what's going on, you're going to watch the markets, economic changes, what's going on. And right now, unfortunately, we have inflation. The country is struggling. We are in recession. So you need to understand capacity and how many loads we have. So go into the stronger areas because no matter what, some areas are always have loads. Maybe they pay less, but they will always have the loads due to what simple supply and demand right and um uh, also density of the population okay stay away 
for high uh, tolls, stay away from dead areas, and you need to know your equipment. Knowing your equipment and the markets for that equipment is a must. Google what production's happening, how much, for example, outbound, uh, outbound shipments from Indiana, how much from Missouri, what kind of commodities get shipped, what are the numbers. The numbers has to be national numbers, right? As I always say, and I make fun of it, in every state, we can find one cow. In every state, we can come an apple tree. Doesn't mean that this state is exporting beef or it's exporting apples, right? So you need to make sure when you read that information, you logically see the numbers. Are they really shipping or it's just a few few farms there with the cows, right? So that's what it is. You need to know the knowledge. For people who come in and signing up, please make sure you use our um, uh, code to get first month free. Get the pro. Pro subscription, the most expensive one, 179 and then downgrade 30 days later. But at least you're going to be able to see all the tools, all the market changes, learn what is a try haul is, what, what, what's going on there, right? Learn your equipment, your posting preferences. So that's what you do. Again, thank you for all the members. You can sign up and become a member on our YouTube channel because we do support our community. We just awarded our free classes last week uh, with all your help, and we're going to do it every three months. So your $3.99 is going to go way further. Plus, our members got free classes as well. I do believe I just saw Victoria, and she was a supporter for five, six months. And look at this, my beautiful Ukrainian girl, she got free class for safety. So she's going to receive all the paperwork next week and I'll see her in safety. But did she knew that she's going to win? No, she just wanted to support our channel because she liked the way I teach and she was a good student and she just wants to make a difference. So that's why look at this. She gave first and she received back. Give and you shall receive. All right. What else do we have? Um, hi, Alex. Do you show students how to use all the softwares they needed for dispatching? Yes, we show the load boards. We show the uh, factoring apps. We show the load boards for the brokers. We show them PC Miler. We show them Toll Guru. Everything you need to know as a dispatcher, of course, we you have to see at least once, right? And then I can give you suggestion. Should you buy this or should you not? But the some softwares you need to have. Um, who we have? Oh, Javier. I took your class last year and the information you teach is so much more than other amazing teacher. Oh, thank you so much. This is our previous teachers. And here's our new teachers. I mean, new students. Sorry, that's sorry, it's the students. See, I'm, I'm already talking too much. Okay. Thank you guys. And she's a member as well. So she is supporting our channel. Thanks for the answer. I appreciate it. Okay. And I am taking her class and let me say that she's very knowledgeable. Whole foundation building is incredible. Sign up. Thank you, Joy. Remember homework is coming today. I gave you guys break for half of the day. Guys, I love you. I'll see you in my classes. Let's stop blaming each other. It's nobody's fault if one party is not doing their responsibilities, right? Let's learn how to fix it, learn from mistake, and do a better job. And only with a strong foundation, you can do that. And I will see you soon. Sign up, share, and do what? And put comments and like. The more comments and like we get, the more people going to see our YouTube. I'll see you soon. And always me, your sassy dispatch girl. Bye.